I was real, real shy. I knew I could harmonize with pretty much anything that you know was on the radio or uh, at home. We sang around the dinner table a lot. And in my senior year in high school, I auditioned for a musical. I was sort of pushed into auditioning for it because I would have never done it without being pushed into it. And um, I got the lead. I found the first acting school, you know, that was reputable, and um, auditioned for it, and I got in. But it was also there that I found that my voice was a very strong factor in my makeup. <laughs> I was pretty bold about getting the auditions for a shy girl. <laughs> I used to, uh, you know, go into producers' offices and say, you have to hear me sing. I always relied on my voice to get me through. Gloria was my first single, and we just ran all over the country. The first year singing in all the dance clubs. And, I mean, the, the club dates were, the first one was one in the morning, the second one was three in the morning. It's not easy, but when you're up that, on that stage, it makes up for it. There's nothing like it. I wish we could be alone, all alone. I wish we could be I would like to uh, have people come hear me because they want to hear me sing. I really don't ever want to stop singing for people. I really want to touch people's hearts. This is the most important thing to me. Laura Branigan, her very first song accomplished just that. She touched people's hearts and ears and started quite a few toes tapping with Gloria. And it's been almost instant stardom ever since. Laura Branigan. She's followed up Gloria with her second hit single, Solitaire, not to mention appearing on TV in an episode of Chips, singing soundtracks for various movies, and even performing for the President of the United States at a benefit. But Laura Branigan says it's only the beginning. She wants to conquer the world. I love America, especially because it's my country, but I think that a lot of American artists don't pay attention to Europe until after they've become big stars here, and then they decide they'll try it as a secondary market. I think that there's nothing greater than being able to perform internationally and going from country to country and feeling the different types of audiences. There's so much out there, and I don't see why. I, you know, it's, it's nice for me to do it all in the beginning, to try to break the world at once, because it's still all exciting to me and new. That world also includes Japan and Australia, where Laura Branigan has just finished touring and where her songs are also dancing right up the international music charts. Her latest song to score big on the American music charts is Solitaire, which was originally a French chart topper. In French, it's a different lyric. It's, um, it's really more about solitude. You know, the solitude of the mountains, of sitting up on top of a mountain. It's just, it's not, it has nothing to do with a relationship. The lyrics for Solitaire were rewritten in English for Laura Branigan, and the change to a relationship-oriented song proved to be the right approach, as Solitaire scored in the top five in May of this year. Singing that song is such an emotional experience. I mean, it starts out very sort of slow and, you, you know, reflective, and then it builds up. It's like remembering the hurt you once felt. And as you remember it, you start out just thinking about it. And as you remember it, you could really work yourself into a frenzy. And then that great guitar lick by uh, Michael Landau in between, and then you just 
take off and send it home. I still remember how much I used to need you Tried so hard to please you But you didn't need me You knew I loved you knew I always would be there You just did what you wanted You didn't care All the cards were held by you There was nothing I could do All those nights I sat alone Staring at the telephone Wondering were you ever coming home Solitaire, it got so lonely Solitaire, no one to hold me Where were you when I played Solitaire? It took some time about you started living without you now look who's back here you've had a change of heart and mine just couldn't wait no no you found out you loved me just a little too late once the cards were held by you now there's nothing you can do Coming up on the Hot Ones, from solitaire to a flash dancer's imagination, with Laura Branigan. <laughs> Laura Branigan. She's performed in front of the camera as well as the microphone. My first acting role on film was with <laughs> Chips. I co-starred with Eric Estrada because I had done the theme song for one of the Chips episodes, and they were interested in, you know, having me in the uh, film singing Gloria, so they wrote in a whole part for me and all that. And it was a good experience for me. It was really a lot of fun. Laura Branigan intends to balance both careers, acting and singing. And she also does a little songwriting as well. I haven't had too much time to write lately, but I've written a lot of songs, and I feel that my songs will have their time. My songs are really very emotional, and they're sort of the core of my being. I think they'll have their time. I'm not worried about that. One Laura Branigan written song has found its time. It's called I Wish We Could Be Alone, and it appeared on her first album, Branigan. I wish we could be alone. Being alone is one thing Laura Branigan says the fledgling rock star sometimes is, whether she wants to be or not. I remember one time in, when I was doing a, a gig down in Atlanta. Oh, it was a rough gig. You know, the club was pretty rough and everything. And I was watching this show about Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> 
and the demise of a star and what she went through. And at this point, it, it was really, I was just becoming used to the pace and it was a very hard time for me because it all came so suddenly and I was, oh, and I really remember right then feeling very alone and lost, you know, thinking, watching the show about Marilyn Monroe and what this business did to her and how she was such a beautiful star and yet it just tore her apart. Laura Branigan says she's too determined to be torn apart by fame, but she doesn't mind writing about her personal experiences or even those of others she's observed. I think all the songs I write are, are things that I really feel or people feel at, at one point or another in time. And I, I try to look around me and see what, if I'm feeling something or if perhaps I'm not feeling something, but I notice that other people are going through that. Sometimes it just pours out onto paper. I wish we could be alone So all of the world couldn't see How much we have together And how much you mean to me I wish we could put out the flame But oh sweet baby, tell me would it be right I take the subway and you take the train I got a husband and you got a wife I wish we could love and then Not always have to pretend I wish we could be alone All alone I wish we could be alone In the 80s, more and more filmmakers are depending on contemporary recording artists to boost ticket and soundtrack sales. Movies do need theme songs, and ever since Laura Branigan's smash hit Gloria, she's had her share of offers to sing them. She sang the theme for Love is Forever, a movie made for TV, and she also sang a song for the movie that has introduced breaking, a type of street dancing, to the country. That movie is Flashdance, and Laura Branigan's contribution is Imagination. It was produced by Phil Ramone, who's a great producer. I knew him from New York, you know, he's got one foot in the street and one on the curb. <laughs> he's really a great producer. I love the track, I think it's a real sexy track. And um, singing it, I, I remember I was leaving for Europe the next day, uh, that night, and we went in to record it, and it, it was just so much fun to sing, because the beat, I think, is so sexy. And uh, I just love singing it.
Brannigan, The Who, and Mama. After this, on The Hot Ones. Being a female rock and roll star is not always easy. You've got to maintain that image and keep in shape. For Laura Brannigan, though, it is easy. Yeah, I love to exercise. I love to exercise, and I'm... The pace recently hasn't allowed me to have, you know, as much as I'd like. I used to play squash every single night and work out every day, but now I, I get it where I can. It's constant watching of the diet, and, you know, you have to be aware when you're in the public eye of what you look like, and I think it's, it's nice to do that anyway as a person because you always feel better when you, look, when you feel that you look your best, and you, anyone, really, but I think when you're in the public eye, it's a lot more evident to you. You know, that you have to keep on your toes. Luckily for Laura Brannigan, she doesn't crave banana splits or hot fudge sundaes. But keeping on her toes can mean tiptoeing to the nearest Japanese restaurant. Sushi. <laughs> That's my passion. That is my craving. My manager hates it. <laughs> and so we're always on the road together, and I, I always sneak around and ask everybody, do you like sushi? Do you like sushi? Where's the restaurant? And she hears me and goes, no. We'll be in Italy, and I'll find a sushi restaurant. In between bites of sushi, Laura Brannigan has recorded her second album, titled Brannigan 2, and it features a song originally recorded by a group of men, The Who. Mom's got a squeeze box she wears on her chest, but when daddy comes home he never gets no rest, cause she's playing all night, and the music's all right. Mom's got a squeeze box, daddy never sleeps at night. Squeeze box was, um, that was Doug Morris's idea, that he's the president of Atlantic Records, and that was the Who version of Squeezebox. I first heard it and I said, no way, I, I couldn't imagine myself singing this song. And, and he said, just try it, just try it. So I tried it and um, I really love it. It's so much fun to sing and I've, I've done it in front of audiences and they go wild because I, I'm sure it's so incongruous <laughs> with me, you know, when they think of the Who. They all know it, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. Mama's got a squeeze, but she wears on her chest. When Daddy comes home, he never gets no rest, cause she's playing all night, and the music's all right. Mama's got a squeeze, but Daddy never sleeps at night. Well, the kids don't eat, and the dog can't sleep, there's no escape from the music in the whole damn Cause she's playing all night And the music's all right Mama's got a squeeze box And daddy never sleeps at night She goes in and out And in and out And in and out And in and out She's playing all night And the music's all right Mama's got Box and daddy never sleeps at night. She 
When Laura Branigan recorded her first hit song, she had never taken formal voice lessons. But since then, she's reconsidered. I didn't start until after Gloria. Then I, I really felt that um, it was about time, you know, I, I, because I, I didn't want to take singing lessons too early because I feel that um, there's a lot of personality to be developed in the voice. And sometimes a singing teacher, if you take too early, and you don't find the right singing coach, that they'll take away the personality, they straighten out the voice, they, they teach you how to, you know, form all your vowels so that it takes away from your own expression. By the time Laura Branigan recorded Gloria, she felt she had her own singing style and is now taking those voice lessons. But the success of Gloria had some surprises in store. You know, it was the big moment that I had been waiting for, and then the, my, my schedule went from, you know, hoping and, and waiting and praying and everything to just, it just took off. And um, the pace is so fast, and you have to work so hard, and you really don't have a moment to rest. And you can't rest because you don't have the time and you have to promote, and you can't let up. And I think a, a good artist doesn't let up. I think you... You have to, of course, take care of your health and everything and give yourself ti time to rest, but only enough time that's needed to get yourself back in shape to go back out. Laura Brannigan continues to go back out, right back onto vinyl and her second album, Brannigan 2. On it, she's recorded another song originally co-written by the composer of Gloria, Umberto Tazzi. And like Gloria, the English lyrics were written for Laura Brannigan by Diane Warren. It's called Mama. An Italian song. The Italians love this one. I think it's a real sexy beat. In fact, it's it's doing well in the clubs.
Coming up on The Hot Ones, Laura Branigan deep in the dark. Or was that Dirk Commissar? Brannigan 2. That's the title of Laura Brannigan's second album, and it includes a melody which has enjoyed immense popularity in several versions, including the original in German by Falco. We knew that they had done the song, but we weren't sure if they were going to release it. So we said, well, why not? I love it for the album. I think it's great. People are going to be surprised by that one. It's going to sneak up and catch them in the night. Check it out, Joe. In the Dark is the title of Laura Branigan's version of the Der Kommissar melody. And Laura Branigan says she thinks it captures the original German feeling of the song. I love the story that it tells. I, I really think this is going to be a, a good one for the audiences. The audiences may be dancing when Laura Branigan belts out songs like Deep in the Dark, but she also plans to draw a tear or two with her ballads. My idol growing up was Edith Piaf, who was, was a great fr French chanteuse. And um, I always had a, an affinity for European audiences because I think they are very aware of emotion in, in singing. You know, they latch onto that quickly. When I used to sit 
and play the piano. I used to, I know all the Billie Holiday songs, the Edith Piaf, you know, and my blues and all those. I think my heart really lies in the real emotional, you know, ballads. On Brannigan 2, Laura Brannigan sings one of those emotional ballads called Close Enough, a song composed by her arranger, Robbie Buchanan, and one she first heard through her manager. She played over the phone for me, and I flipped out. I think this song is a, it's like an epic, you know, and the synthesizer parts that he did on it are just phenomenal. It's, oh, uh, I just love it. I love singing it. Also included in the emotional category on the Brannigan 2 album is the song, How Am I Supposed to Live Without You? Laura Brannigan says singing this song is a once in a lifetime experience. You know when you have an emotion inside you and finally you find something to express it exactly. Ugh, this is the song I was waiting for, I think my whole life to sing. This ballad, this is the kind of song that you have to not have a heart in order not to be touched by this song. I love this song. I could hardly believe it when I heard the news today. I had to come and get it straight from you. They said you were leaving. Someone swept your heart away. From the look upon your face, I see it's true. So tell me all about it. Tell me about the plan. To make it, then tell me one thing more before I.
Laura Branigan's first hit. After this, on the Hot Ones. Laura Branigan. On her first ever hit single, her performance was nominated for a Grammy. The song was Gloria, and Laura Branigan says even though she didn't win the Golden Gramophone, just being nominated put her in some talented company. I sort of couldn't believe it. <laughs> no, because I looked, there's Olivia Newton, John, Linda Ronstadt, and Juice Newton, and I thought, oh, it's too soon for me to win anything, you know. I thought, it's not right to win something on your first record and all that. And yet the back of my mind was saying, when all of a sudden I was sitting there in the audience and uh, mine was the second category and I didn't expect it. And my heart starts going, bum, 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 bum. But uh, it was a real thrill to be nominated and I was real proud of that. Gloria was a big winner in other arenas, scoring in the top of the music charts in the fall of 1982 and bringing Laura Branigan her first gold record. Gloria was also the first in a long line of songs Laura Branigan recorded from other countries. Gloria's an Italian song by Umberto Tazzi. It was a big hit there about four years ago, and in Germany and all the, pretty much all the non-English speaking countries. Um, Jack White, my producer, brought it to me and asked me what I thought, and I liked it. You know, I really thought it had possibilities, but I didn't think it was American enough. And we gave it the old American heave-ho. <laughs> And the lyrics are completely different. It used to be a love song. Laura Branigan's anglicized version of the Italian Gloria crawled up the music charts very slowly. Its popularity started in the dance clubs across America, where Laura Branigan says she once needed assurance from her manager, Susan Joseph, before she could even appear before all those dancers to sing Gloria. In the beginning, when we used to go around to the clubs and I would sing it, I remember asking Susan, I said, are you sure they're going to know the song? She goes, don't worry, and I'd get out there and they'd be screaming, I mean, and, you know, singing all the words, so that was a real thrill. A thrill until all those fans started calling Laura Branigan Gloria, although her success has since changed all that. Gloria was the kind of song that gave me, as a new artist, a real foundation, you know, in, the, in terms of establishing my identity. People used to call me Gloria, you know, but... Um, by the time, really, it reached number one, they were calling me Laura, finally. And Laura Branigan says she'll never get tired of singing her first hit. It's a great song. There's Every time I sing it, I get the same thrill, you know? You have to realize, too, that the audience feeds that thrill. You know, people are really what make it. No matter how many times you've sung something, if the audience is, is giving you that, there's no way you can't react. Gloria.
Singing's a big part of it for me. I think if I couldn't sing, if I, not if I wasn't a singer, because that'd be a different thing, but if I couldn't sing right now, if someone told me that I couldn't sing anymore, it would be like having my wings clipped off. <laughs> 